Hi everyone, my name is Liana Genovese. I'm the CEO and founder of Imaginable Solutions. In this video, we will be learning how to adapt guided hands for various levels of mobility. For individuals who have weak shoulders or visual impairments, you can use a slant board, a book, a binder, and place it underneath guided hands to put it on a slant so the individual can rest their elbow on the table while using the device. Just make sure that the blue arm is bent into place so that your writing utensil is making contact with the iPad or the paper. This will also enable individuals with visual impairments to see the iPad or the activity they are working on better. You can also place a light board on the base of guided hands to increase the contrast of the activity. Suction cups are a great way to adapt guided hands for individuals with spastic movements. So I've drilled four holes into the corners of the base sheet and I've added a suction cup underneath. So when I press the device down and activate all the suction cups, I'm not able to take out hands off the table. So when the individual has that spastic movement, it's really difficult for the individual to lift guided hands off the table. Pool noodles are a great way to limit the range of motion for guided hands. Using a measuring tape, cut the pool noodle to seven inches. Once you cut the pool noodle, Cut a line going right through. Once you have two of them, you can place them around the rod. This will limit their range of motion and prevent them from hitting the stands on the device. For individuals who have high tone, to prevent the blue arm from moving out of the way, what we like to do is place the pool noodle on the underside of the handpiece and secure it using the duct tape. So that way, when they try to apply pressure downwards, the pool noodle is going to be in the way. So it's gonna keep them in a flat neutral position. For those with severe hand spasticity and wrist flexion, our large flat hand piece is the most commonly used. Place the small pool noodle over the hand piece, placing it back in the wrist rest. And now the individual can rest their hand over the pool noodle keeping them in a neutral position. Adding a weight to the individual's wrist will help slow down any spastic movements and tremors in their hand as they use guided hands. If you see that their elbow is dropping because of the weight, you can add the pool noodle underneath the wrist rest to keep them in a neutral position and prevent their elbow from dropping. If you cut a small piece of a pool noodle to one and three quarters of an inch and a piece of duct tape to about nine inches, this will be a great adaptation for individuals who have low tone and high tone. So I place the duct tape in the middle of the pool noodle. For individuals with low tone and those who experience elbow dropping, we can place the pool noodle underneath the wrist rest and secure the duct tape on either sides. This will also enable the individual to rest their forearm while using guided hands while still making contact with the iPad. Guided hands can also be used as an arm sliding system using our flat hand piece. This is a great adaptation for individuals who still have some fine motor skills in their hands and they wanna move away from the hand over hand support. Place the hand piece in the wrist rest, place your arm in the holder with your wrist at the very end so that your fingers are able to move. You can also place another wrist strap or I've seen a little girl use a scrunchie at her wrist to keep the arm more secure. You can isolate the finger so that you can do several different activities like pointing. You can also use the iPad to navigate around and you can use a writing utensil. This encourages the individual to use the gross motor skills in their shoulder rather than using the fine motor skills in their hand. In order to access all areas of your paper or touchscreen device, if you're right-handed, place your activity on the top left-hand side. If it's a single sheet of paper, I like to hold my paper in place using a binder clip. Now, if you're using the iPad, you can also secure the iPad in place by using a non-slip sheet such as Dyson. If you're left-handed, place the utensil on the opposite side and place the paper or the iPad on the right-hand side. To increase the resistance of the sliding system, you can use bungee cords or an elastic band hooked on our sliding system. For the bungee cord, hook it around the rods and the stand. Do this on either side depending on the level of resistance that you wish to have. Now, as you slide up on the sliding system, you will experience more friction and resistance. 
Similarly, you can do this with the elastic bands. Place it over the two white pieces on either side, depending on the resistance you wish to have. As you move your hand up the sliding system, you will experience more friction and resistance, which is a really great way to activate the shoulder muscles and promote shoulder control. The seating height and device placement for guided hands is very important. For best results, place guided hands on a flat, sturdy surface like a table and at a comfortable writing or eating height. Now, if the individual's legs can be as close as they can to the table, that is best. Since the individual is using the gross motor skills in their shoulder to move around and use guided hands, if the device is higher up, then they're activating a lot of their shoulder and they can become very tired or weak. Even so, we've had individuals who have very weak shoulders use a lap tray to put the device on their lap, activating even less of the shoulder. Guided hands can also be placed on a wheelchair tray without a lip around the tray, and it has to fit the dimensions of guided hands, which is 15 inches by 15 inches. Guided hands can also be used with electrical stimulation to help with elbow extension and relaxing the muscles in the hand so they can have a better grasp of the handpiece. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you check out our Instagram page, imaginable.solutions, you will find many different children and adults of various mobility levels using guided hands in the adaptations that they've used. If you've given any of these adaptations a try, we'd love to hear about your experience. And if you thought of a new one, we'd love to hear it. You can email us at info at